our RNA is mostly our RNA, ribosomal RNA. So if we want to do like sequencing and stuff, it can get in the way. But we can use magnetic beads with biotinylated probes and magnet trays to help grab that our RNA and whisk it away before it can get in our way. And that's just one way we can deplete ribosomal RNA. So let's talk more about this strategy and other strategies for removing ribosomal RNA. And yeah. So I've talked a lot more about ribosomes in other posts, but there are these complexes of protein and RNA that travel along messenger RNA instructions for making proteins and piece together the corresponding amino acids in this process called translation. The, this complex, it has a lot, a lot, a lot of RNA in addition to some proteins, but it's actually the RNA part that's actually going to be helping doing the catalysis. So helping actually bring those um, like connect the amino acids together into this growing chain. And so we need a lot of ribosomes because we need to make a lot of proteins. And so we're going to have a lot of ribosomal RNA. And in fact, because so normally you have like transcription, you go from DNA to messenger RNA and then translation, you make that into a protein. With RNA, with like the rRNA, so with the ribosomal RNA in these in these ribosomes, they actually like it's functional as RNA. So it doesn't go to this translation. So you're not getting amplification at this step and you have to rely on only the transcription to make all the copies that you want. And so we actually have lots of copies of ribosomal, the genes for ribosomal RNA. Um, and so it can be a problem with like DNA sequencing and stuff too. Um, but when it comes to RNA sequencing, we have a lot of these RNA copies of the RNA because we have a lot of ribosomes. And so then when we're trying to do things like RNA sequencing to figure out what's being expressed by like measuring the messenger RNAs, or we're trying to do things like in my case, I'm doing this um, technique called ribosome footprinting where you're trying to see like where the ribosomes are bound. And in any of these cases, you're going to have the problem where the majority of the RNA that you're seeing is going to be ribosomal RNA because about 90% of your cell's RNA is actually this ribosomal RNA. And so if you want to take that RNA and like convert it, make DNA copies of it, so like reverse transcribe it to form the cDNA, the complementary DNA, and then make like turn that into a library and do all this processing and stuff so you can sequence it, you want to get rid of that R RNA typically so that your library isn't just entirely this ribosomal RNA. So you're not like wasting all of your resources doing the and then like having to have all these sequences that are all the same thing that isn't the thing that you want. And um, taking these resources away from the rare things that are what you really actually do care about. And so there are different ways that you can get rid of rRNA, as well as ways that you can enrich for the sequences that you want. So the rRNA depletion methods, most of them, they involve some sort, using some sort of DNA sequence that complements regions of the ribosomal rRNA. So you have short pieces of DNA, these like oligos, that are going to be complementary to regions of the rRNA. And so because you have different rRNA genes, and because you have multiple rRNAs and because they're big and stuff, you have like a mix typically of these probes that are going to bind specifically to the ribosomal rRNA. And they can do different things when they bind. Sometimes the goal is to reverse, to block the reverse transcription of it so that when you make that cDNA, well, you can't make the cDNA if it's being blocked by this, by this probe. But the cDNA of the other things can get made. Other methods make it susceptible to a RNA DNA hybrid tumor. So, like an RNA's H, this is an enzyme, this endonuclease, that is only going to cut RNA DNA hybrids. And so, you're only going to have these hybrids in the rRNA. And so, then this the rRNA is going to get degraded. So, some kits that use this method include like NAP Next RNA depletion kit, Kappa Ribo Erase, and Takara Clontex Ribogon. A lot of other methods use magnetic beads. So this is um, like aluminum's ribo zero, Keagen's gene read RNA depletion, lexicon ribocop, as well as um, custom made versions like is what I'm going to be using. Um, and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But the idea here is that you can like physically remove the ribosomal RNA by binding it to DNA probes that you then bind to um, that you then buy two beads, and then you capture those beads, such as using a magnet, and then you can use this magnet to get this to the side of the tube and then pull out the, the rRNA free RNA, so the RNA without the stuff. And there's actually different steps at which you can do this various things. Um, and so you can also like do things to remove the cDNA from ribosomal RNA and stuff, but then you're wasting a step after you've done the cDNA conversion. 
Um, there are different like caveats to different methods, especially depending on your experiment. And so if when you're doing like ribosome footprinting, you need to be extra careful. And so I came across like this article um, that, from the Rachel Green's lab, from Boris Sinstein et al, um, where they found that the like if you use the nucleus depletion media depletion, so like their RNAs H methods, that those are actually they can have some off-target activity that's actually going to cause problems when you're trying to get like high um, high resolution data about where the where the ribosomes were actually bound. If you have like extra cuts kind of by this RNAs H, then you can have problems and with the resolution and so they recommend using a biotinylated probe approach. When it comes to those probes, often you, um, it's like, it can be best to make probes that are specific for your experiment. So not just do like the species matter in terms of the RNA sequences and the probes that you'd want, but it can also vary in different cells, um, what's expressed most more and that sort of thing. And so I found this other article, um, for how I'll kind of all on this bioinformatics article and it is describing this software that you can actually design your um, RNAs to match your experiment so that you can have um, the best chances of success. When it comes to actually ordering these, it's um, you can just like order this biotin tag tag. So this tag is like um, this triethylene glycol, this linker. Um, and then it has this biotin. And so we talked about biotin before, biotin, the biotin streptavidin interaction is super duper strong and we take advantage of it. Um, we can take advantage of it with protein um, chromatography. In that case, we're typically using like a modified version of streptactin that like um, binds less strongly. And then we have a modified form of like a biotin mimic on our protein that binds less strongly. And we have to do this binding less strongly because the streptavidin biotin interaction is super duper strong. And um, so we don't wouldn't want it when we want to like wash off our protein at the end to compete off our protein. But when you just want to get things really stuck then biotin and streptavidin are really great. And you can have these beads, um, get these like magnetic beads that are coded to covered um, that are attached to the streptavidin. So they're like conjugated to streptavidin, so which is this little protein that's gonna bind to, bind to the biotin. And then you can just order this biotin modification when you're ordering the different um, oligo, so di the different DNA probes that you want to use to target those specific sequences. So the sequences that I'm using are based off of uh, Magnolia et al's um, paper they, where they describe this protocol. And here they have like a 14, a set of 14 of these oligos. Um, and so this is just the like the RNA genomic location where it's located and then the sequence. And then when you order it, you order it with the fat pine um, biotin tag. And you want to do HPLC purification. Um, so basically, this is instead of like just like standard desalting, you want to make sure that because they do the linker ligation to get the biotin on there, you want to make sure that you don't just have like free biotin, um, or you don't you want to make sure that you don't have any just like free um, unlabeled stuff because then that'll compete and then that'll but it won't bind to the beads and then you can get your stuff that's um, not get removed. So those were depletion methods, but there's also like enrichment methods where you enrich for the sequences that you um, that you want. So one way to do this is to use like, you can enrich our different steps. So you can do something kind of similar to this, but instead you have your beads um, that you have attached, you attach things to this. Um, you attach things that you want. You do like an affinity step where you're kind of like, getting the stuff that you want by using like a poly T. So you can have like a poly T attached to the beads. And then you're going to be pulling out the messenger RNAs and not the ribosomal RNAs, or at least not the cytosolic ones. Um, I heard some other like the mitochondrial ones you still have um, the, R, the poly A. So if you don't um, get rid of the mitochondria, then you could still have that problem. Um, some problems with this though, is you're only going to get the messenger RNA and you're only going to get um, things that have a poly A tail. Um, so some, some messenger RNAs like histone and stuff, they don't actually have them, it's weird. But anyway, um, so yeah, so the, this is, it'll give you a more limited set. Um, you can also do 
the enrichment during like your reverse transcription, if that's what you're doing, like when you're generating the cDNA, you can use primers that are specific for um, like messenger RNA, like poly T, or you can use some, if you want messenger RNA, or you can use sequence specific if you want that. Um, and that can help you also um, avoid making copies of the ribosomal RNA and making more copies of the things that you don't want or the things that you do want. <laughs> I mean, um, so those are just some of the methods that are out there. And so, yeah, I've been reading up on this because I'm and ordering my own biotinylated um, probes to use. Um, and so, yeah, so hopefully it works out. <laughs>